Hey guys, today we're driving a 2022 Toyota GR86 Premium Automatic. We haven't done a review on one of these cars yet. We've driven the BRZ Premium Automatic, which in the Subaru land, Premium is the base model, and Toyota land, Premium is the Premium model, but haven't gotten into one of these yet. I wanted to compare some differences between this and my 22 BRZ Premium, which is the base model, but that's a manual. Uh, you can see here we have a slightly different interior in this GR86, which I actually prefer to the Subaru. I really like the way this interior looks. We have lots of white contrast stitching instead of red stitching. I like the design on these seats a little bit better. And I just realized this, it took me a minute, but the automatic gets a cup holder here in the center just below the heated seat controls. Look at that, it's a perfect place to put your phone. Maybe they didn't put it in the manual because it would get in the way of shifting, but it makes so much sense because otherwise there really isn't a good place to put your phone in this interior. This center console area is just kind of a mess. The cable's always getting jammed in the doors like it is right now. It's stuck forever. Um, and then your elbow is always accidentally opening it. It's just, it's a, it's a mess. I hate it. Um, but you know, it is what it is. It works. So I've just been putting my phone right here because I usually don't run with a passenger in my BRZ. This solves that issue. You can actually go and buy these parts on uh, the Subaru or Toyota website and swap it into your manual car if you want. I may do that for my BRZ. We'll see. But for the rest of this, Let's walk you around this GR86, show you what it looks like inside and out. Warming up a little bit more to the automatic transmission. I haven't been a fan of it in the past. I still think the manual is the way to go in the GR86 100%. Um, but if you can't drive manual or you just don't absolutely don't want a manual transmission, this automatic is okay. A automatic GR86 or BRZ is better than no GR86 or BRZ in my mind. Yeah. 228 horsepower from a new 2.4 liter boxer four cylinder Torsen limited slip rear differential. On the Toyota, on the GR86, we get this beautiful duck bill spoiler in the premium model, which I quite like. We have this rear bumper applique right here. And uh, let's see what our trunk space looks like. Nice looking trunk mat for the GR86 little uh, first aid kit here from Toyota and underneath you get a tire repair kit and a couple storage compartments but you can go and pick up a factory spare tire from the previous generation GR86 and bolt it right in here if you want a spare. Uh, the dealership will tell you you can't but you can I've done it it's the same trunk well. Nice looking color too Truno Blue, or Trueno Blue, I don't know how to pronounce it. Black 18 inch wheels with Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires, 215 40R18s, sticky, a little bit noisy on the road. I gotta be honest, I don't like the paint color on the wheels as much on the GR86 as I do with the Subarus. I think Subaru did a really nice job with their graphite, kind of dark anthracite coloring, and the black on these just, eh, it's not as nice paint and it really shows up dirt very obviously because it's kind of a matte black. Let's pop the hood. This new Boxer engine is basically just bored out from the old two liter. A lot more torque, very easy to work on, accessible. Uh, we have a new oil cooler, which is great for the 22 model year. Let's put that back on. The power from this new engine is fantastic. Still gets decent fuel economy. This is rated for 21 in the city, 31 on the highway. I've been averaging about 28 combined in my 22 BRZ manual, and the automatic should do a little bit better. I think on the daily motor highway fuel economy test, they averaged something like 33 or 34 MPG on the highway in this thing. It was pretty, it's pretty impressive. Uh, pretty good highway gas mileage. So uh, if you're easy with your throttle application and light with your right foot, you can get pretty good fuel economy in these cars. Still getting under 300 miles to a tank though, which is kind of annoying, about 280, 260, depending on what I'm doing. Appearance, I really like the look of the GR86. I think this is a great looking car. I like the duckbill spoiler and I like the front bumper. It's simple, it's just classy and elegant and quite beautiful in my opinion. 
We get the uh, turning headlamps in this G R eighty six, which we tested a little bit earlier this year on a BRZ. They work great at night. Still, I think pretty much the same headlamp uh, was the base model, but it just rotates around corners, which is nice. In the G R eighty six, we get our license plate front license plate mounting bracket right here instead of on the BRZ. It's a pop out in the bumper and it's painted. And it just doesn't look as good. This is a much cleaner design in my opinion. Blacked out mirror caps, just classic sports car proportion. It's amazing. I really do think this new GR86 looks so much better than the previous generation. At first I wasn't sold on the taillights, but in person, in real life, they look really sharp. A lot of similarities to the old car. I mean, this basically just has a slightly more powerful engine. Uh, wheels, tires, brakes, suspension, pretty much all that bolts right up from the previous generation. Cat back exhausts will bolt right up. Axle backs, though, are year specific. Dang, I really like this cup holder now. That's, I want one. <laughs> cool. Rear seats, uh, yeah, kind of usable space back there. I put my son's rear facing child seat in the back and it fits great, but the front seat is pushed all the way forward. So no chance for a second passenger in that seat, but I've seen a lot of people run forward-facing car seats, a couple of them in the back, and uh, you can fit a couple kids back there, which is great. No sunroof because track car and rigidity and simplicity. This GR86 Premium is $33,500, so a little bit more expensive than the manual car. Uh, let's take it for a drive and see how it does on the road. Nice looking reverse camera. Turning lines parking sensors, we've got CarPlay connected, lots of little nice accents throughout this interior. I like the Alcantara suede pieces right here and up above the dash. Just a nice looking interior. Blacked out door handles compared to the BRZ too. We have a couple different drive modes with this automatic car compared to the manual. We get a sport mode, which will give us slightly higher revs and a little bit more aggressive shifts. And then there's a snow driving mode, which will dull down throttle response a little bit more. Let's try sport mode a little bit. I haven't played with this as much. We'll use the paddles in a little bit, but I kind of want to see how the transmission reacts uh, in automatic mode. are actually pretty quick from this automatic. Really, one of my only complaints about it is that the gearing is pretty tall. It still works because this car has more power, um, but it's a little bit taller than I think it should be, and the paddle shifters just aren't as responsive as I would like them to be. This isn't like a ZF automatic, or I don't even think they feel as responsive as the previous generation BRZ uh, Toyota 86 automatic cars. Toyota has done a slightly better job than Subaru tuning this automatic. It feels a little bit smoother. It's not bad, it just never quite thrills in the way that the manual car can and does. We'll leave it in drive here. Such a great chassis. There we go, we got a downshift there under hard braking. Liking that. Makes kind of an interesting noise. This does have active sound control or fake piped in noise through the speakers. It's not the most inspiring sound. 
I actually chose to have mine turned off in my BRZ. Uh, you can either have it turned off at the dealer or there is a module that you can unplug, open the passenger door, pop out a panel, and just reach in and unplug. It takes about 30 seconds. Um, up to personal preference. I think the argument for this active sound is that it allows you to hear the car better on track and it just makes a louder noise. But once you put an exhaust on this car and uh, you know do some of the standard mods that a lot of people do, it kind of defeats the purpose of having an aftermarket exhaust. Uh, it's up to personal preference. So there are some options. It is very easy to disable if you don't like it. And if you like it, that's fine. You can enjoy it. So let's talk about some differences between this and the BRZ as far as driving dynamics go. I'm immediately noticing that the GR86 is quite a bit stiffer on the street. We have uh, stiffer springs and dampers, a slightly larger rear sway bar, um, and a little bit less understeer in this GR86, a little bit more of a neutral chassis. In my BRZ, I had to put about a degree and a half of negative camber on the front tires to really dial out all the understeer that I had in my BRZ, and in this, it's pretty neutral from the factory just because of that more balanced suspension setup. Granted, uh, a little bit of front camber wouldn't hurt here either, but uh, I really like the way this GR86 handles. It is noticeably stiffer on the street, so your ride quality is gonna take a little bit of a hit. And uh, on these Michigan roads, I actually kind of prefer the ride quality of my BRZ. It's just a little bit softer, a little bit more comfortable on a daily basis. Let's go. Sport mode, traction off, manual. Yeah, that's what I don't like about the automatic. We could downshift there, we should be able to, but it didn't let me. Oh yeah, so much more grip from this GR86. There is still a little bit of understeer. But it's not, it's not terrible. The turn signals in these new cars are a little bit funky. Uh, around 1,500 miles, 1,200 miles, they start acting up a little bit and then I think they kind of work themselves out. But sometimes when you put your turn signal on, it'll go really fast and then slow down. Uh, it's just kind of one of the one of the only weird flukes and bugs with these new cars. It is nice though. These uh, the new GR86 and BRZ have proven to be pretty reliable, at least upon first impressions from owners. I mean, this car, this platform has really been out for you know it's been out since 2013. Subaru and Toyota have ironed out a lot of the issues. Okay. And this is just kind of an evolution. It's building on that successful platform. This was rated this one of the most reliable vehicles right behind the Mazda Miata in Consumer Reports year after year. It's a very well-built, sturdy platform. Um, I mean, this is still, at, at its roots, kind of a, a cheaper sports car. It's got, you know, economy car feel to it. But it's so much fun. It's so engaging. It's so exciting to drive. And the new power from this... 2.4 Boxer really does make it that much more of an engaging driving experience. This new GR86 feels lighter and more nimble and your controls are a little bit lighter than the old car which felt a little bit heavy and weighed down. This is still only a little bit over 2,800 pounds. I think even in automatic form it's like 2,860 or something. It's a very light car, and it feels so nice to drive something this light and this modern. It's a pretty short list of vehicles under 3,000 pounds these days. I like that in track mode you get your lap timer, oil temperature gauges, coolant temperature gauges. You've got some neat options in this display. The automatic car also gets adaptive cruise control, which is quite nice. We do have a lane keep assist system, but um, I've mostly turned that off this week. We get Subaru's camera-based eyesight, a 
top and uh, it does a pretty good job on the highway maintaining distances and speed turn our cruise control on here you can skip five mile an hour increments by holding the cruise control stock right here which works great change following distance right here and a number of different three different distances so how can we sum up the GR86 automatic? I think uh, I think I was a little bit harsh on the automatic in my initial reviews. If you're buying one of these cars, really you should get the manual. It just adds so much more to the driving experience. I feel like I'm kind of missing out on about 50% of the fun here with an automatic. But I've got to say this is a huge, huge improvement over the previous generation automatic, which was just outright too slow. This is actually a pretty quick car now. It's got a decent power to weight ratio and uh, it shifts quick enough. It's responsive enough. Uh, when you're just driving around normally, it's just a pretty normal automatic transmission uh, in a very sexy sports car body. Uh, but, you know, driving it spiritedly in the canyons, I think you're gonna be frustrated with the trans transmission programming. The paddle shifters just aren't as responsive as I would like them to. They don't downshift when you really want them to. Um, half the fun of this car is really that fantastic six-speed manual transmission in this auto you're just missing out on that but I understand not everyone can or wants to drive a manual and if you don't this isn't the worst option in the world I would also recommend something like the automatic 2 liter Supra or the BMW 230i as really good alternative options with the ZF 8-speed automatic which is just about a perfect as perfect of an automatic transmission as it comes um, Otherwise, this GR86, I, I like the interior a little bit better. I like the way it looks a little bit better. I'm finding with most people that I talk to that a lot of people are preferring the GR86 over the BRZ in this new generation. only reason I bought a BRZ was because that's all that I had available. Otherwise, I probably would have bought a GR86 if I could have. Um, I think the suspension is a little bit stiffer than it needs to be, but a lot of people will change out the shocks and dampers and springs anyway. Um but it does handle better from the factory, and I think if you threw some camber at this, this would be a really nice chassis setup for track driving straight out of the box. Um, yeah, this, this is a nice car. I, I really do think this is one of the best performance bargains. It's just practical enough that you could daily drive it, and I've been daily driving my BRZ, and I put 1,800 miles on it so far, and I love it. And then, of course, I spent six years and 60,000 miles in my 2014 BRZ, and that was a fantastic car. It kind of served all my needs as a, uh, you know, a, a young bachelor. <laughs> so, uh, and even as, you know, an early family man, now I, I can kind of still make it work. So it's a very versatile, enjoyable, fun to drive sports car platform. Um, cheap to own, cheap to run, consumables on these things are very affordable. You don't get a lot of uh, tire wear or brake wear. It's just, this car is so light that it really doesn't chew through consumables. Tire availability is really nice. You can throw a set of winners on here, go slightly narrower or slightly taller, and you have a pretty decent winter car. Um, I've driven mine all winter throughout my ownership years, and I, I really enjoyed it. It's super fun. If anything, I actually kind of prefer driving it in the snow than I do in the dry, because you can kick the tail end around. But Anyway, I think whatever you decide to get with a GR86 or BRZ, you kind of can't go wrong. At this point, uh, availability on them is a little bit scarce, but people are finding a way. Uh, I got lucky and found an order that got canceled and got in on a list. So, you know, you call around a little bit. Some dealerships are marking them up ridiculously high. Others aren't. Um, here in Michigan, we've had quite a few markups, but in Ohio, I'm finding that there aren't as many. i do not sure what the West Coast is like, but... Anyway, highly recommend this car. I think it's one of my favorite options for the around $30,000 price point. If you want rear-wheel drive, it's kind of one of the only options, if I'm being honest. It's just a tactile, engaging, old-school, fun Japanese lightweight sports car that uh, kind of last of its breed. This and the Z are really the only two kind of mechanical-feeling sports cars left on the market. Anyway, if you can get your hands on one of these new cars, I would highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.